Hello. So, I have returned after quite a long hiatus. Um, I uh, am back now, as you can see. And I'm going to be starting a new series, which is where I'm going to go through loads of different devices in Bitwig. And I'm going to show you all of the different parts of what they do. And I'm also going to show you some cool tips and tricks and sound design techniques that you can do with them. So it's going to be fantastic. Uh, if you have any suggestions for what you want the next one to be, the first one's going to be the amp, by the way. Um, but if you have any suggestions for uh, what you want the next one to be, then tell me and I'll do it. So we're going to start with the amp. Um, we're going to go through um, different sound design stuff. You can do it at synthwise. And we're also going to have a look at um, what you would do if you're putting a guitar through it. So first of all, um, what I've done here is I've edited the default preset quite a bit. So uh, when you open up amp, let me just show you here. You got a whole bunch of stuff on that you're probably not going to want right away. Or maybe you will. Who knows? So it's got this pre-EQ. It's got this post-EQ that's uh, like high passing and low passing. There's some distortion settings happening in there. And the um, cabinet is turned on by default. So what I've done here on my one is I've just turned down the mix on this. So the cabinet isn't active. I've bypassed these so that they're not affecting anything. And I've reset the bias so that it's in the middle. Because you don't want your bias off. Well... We don't initially want it off and i've set the sag to zero and uh, i've set the drive kind of lower so it's not really shaping the wave and that's all i've changed now so i've just got a sine wave here um quickly the different parts here are pre-eq is before the distortion post eq after the distortion but before the cabinet and the cabinet is basically a speaker emulation for when you plug your guitar amp into a speaker it has a certain eq sound um, that is inherent to its speakeredness and the cabinet that it resides in. And uh, this is emulating that. So uh, these are the dimensions of said cabinet. And uh, these are models of said cabinet. So that is that is the amp in a nutshell. Uh, you've got a stereo button here that makes the stereo. It makes uh, anything you put it through it stereo. Otherwise, everything will be basically processed in mono and it will spit out a mon mono signal. You got pre-effects, which go before the distortion, and you've got post-effects, which go after everything. If you hit F1 on this, uh, you can find all of that information in here in the very helpful Bitwig help tab that is available for every device. Uh, cool stuff with it. So just a quick run through of what's going on in here. Uh, we've got these different distortion types. Uh, the first one is analog, the second two are transistor based, which is uh, like guitar amp sound and stuff. Then you got this pixelated one, which is uh, super digital. These ones are just, uh, they just kind of square by like a regular distortion does. And uh, then you've got Ulick. This is like a Ulick. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. But you've got Ulick. And uh, this is uh, sort of like an FM kind of a. Let's turn this down because it's going to get pretty loud. So this is like an FM sort of thing. It seems to be like sign modding the input. And then you've got these folds. So there's this one, which uh, folds the wave there. I think the other one just does it on the other side and slightly differently. And then this third one, uh, wave folds the whole scenario. So that is the distortion types. Um, I suppose, explained. Yeah. The more you drive it, the more uh, weird it gets. And um, so these other two things, what does this do? What's this crack? Okay, so does different things on different distortions. So it will bias the distortion. So for instance, on smooth, it, it's basically going to move where the zero crossing is um, on, say, pixelated. It's changing the way that the pixelation is affecting the waveform. And, uh... Ulick, I think it maybe changes the pitch. Yeah, it looks like it's doing that. And the waveform... It's just doing regular bias here as well. I'm pretty sure that's the same for all of them. The sag control, um... So, this is emulating the natural compression of uh, a tube amp. So, if you've got a guitar and you're putting it through a tube amp, basically, you're going to hit a chord real fast, and then the tubes are going to be like, 
Oh, I didn't see the first part of that. I wasn't quick enough to catch it, so that part just comes through real loud. And then the rest gets compressed by the tubes and is quieter. And that has the effect of um, basically making it, um, making the attack of the of the note more attacky. Here, let me explain because my English isn't working. So you can see here, we're getting this big old bump right here before it, the compression comes and goes. Nope, that's gonna be that's gonna be less. So you can do that to add attack to things that you're putting through the amp, which is good. So um, that is essentially it. Then you can um, edit uh, the tone. Now this isn't going to make a big difference because we're using a sine wave. So let's use something that has some harmonics that we can mess with. So this is basically just a distortion device when you've got the cabinets turned off. So let's just, let's bass up a bit. So if you affect the if you affect the um, signal before the distortion if you change the EQ of it it's going to have a pretty dramatic effect on how the distortion sounds so let's go to music here. you got that kind of squelchiness going on there's a fold here so there's sort of a massive amount of uh, variation in this is really just going to sort of EQ uh, out frequencies that you don't want or add some in that you do want. Um, but the, the biggest kind of change in sound is EQ. So, of course, you also have a high pass and low pass here. You can hear that it makes a big difference. Um, the way that you EQ it before it hits the distortion. Uh, the next thing that we're going to have a look at, so next thing you've got is the cabinet. So let's engage this. And this is kind of acting as an EQ. So uh, this is uh, basically model and a speaker. So these different models sound pretty significantly different. different. And then you have access to the size of them, which also makes a pretty significant difference. So you can see that you can uh, change the sound quite a lot between all three. So let's say you were to, you know, add in a filter here. Let's uh, pull this up. Actually, let's add a modulator here. Let's uh, modulate this. You can also modulate, uh, for instance, the size of your. Um, you can also modulate the size of your cap. So yeah, you've got like a lot of different stuff you can do. Then you can obviously modulate. And then obviously everything that's happening here is mono. So let's say we were to introduce a bit of um, stereoness to the oscillator. Right, you can hear that it's all coming through mono. So to get it to come through stereo, we need to hit this stereo button over here. So I'm going to move on to some of the sound design tips that you can do with the amp now. So obviously, first of all, um, one of the things that makes a big difference is if you modulate the EQ going into the amp. So if we were to modulate this, and then say we bring up this and modulate its frequency. So you can modulate the frequency going in. That's going to make a pretty big difference to the sound. Now, the other thing you can do is you can, as I said, you can modulate the cabinet here. So let's bring that mix in there. And then let's say you were using the uh, pixelated, or sorry, the Eulic here. So you can kind of um, kind of get an FM sort of effect on that signal.
and you can try the different art models. <laughs> Let's see what it's like. Let's add a bit of stereo in here as well. Okay, so um, that's uh, okay. So that's uh, sort of an extreme example of stuff that you could um, do with the amp, I suppose. Uh, the other thing that you can do that's uh, slightly less obvious is if we, uh, let's just take out all of these EQs here and let's um, set this back to being sort of just a mono ordeal over here. So let's actually take the drive mostly off and uh, let's take this off. So we can just go back to a regular saw wave. So, another thing that we can do here is we can um, basically use this cabinet section and put this into another distortion. So, let's get another amp. All right, let's just duplicate this one. I'm going to take it off here. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distort pretty heavily on this one. And then I'm going to... Uh, turn up the color here and you can see when you're putting this cabinet through a distortion it uh, kind of accentuates the effect of it so you'll hear what I mean so let's get some modulation on that and just see uh, I'll show you what I mean by how it sounds it's kind of like a reverb filter in this. Let's turn the stereo off on this as well. So, you can hear here, you can get kind of a uh, weird sort of by modulating what I'm doing here is I'm just modulating the size of the cabinet. And it sounds pretty dramatically different depending on what cabinet model you're actually on. So yeah, there's some there's some fairly mad sounds in there to be had. All right. Also, if you snack a load of these on top of each other, these um these like cabinet modulation things. Let's just duplicate that a lot. Gets weird. Okay, that got a bit too weird. Let's just do it twice. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's, so let's duplicate that again. And then let's like slightly change the values on the second one. And let's do another one. And then let's uh, make this one uh, like a different as well and um, make it a different size. Yeah, and then let's uh, obviously you get the idea, but let's do it again for fun. Uh, let's, bring it. let's make this one. And then let's um, uh, let's add some stereo notes to the oscillator. And let's uh, make all of them stereo. See if that sounds cool as well. Stereo and stereo. So this is all stereo. It's probably going to be a mess. Yeah, pretty much. Um, anyway, you get the idea. So. Um, the last part of the amp situation is uh, actually using it as an amp, uh, which is going to be a significantly smaller part of the video. So here's a guitar part that I recorded, and uh, I just um, I'm just putting it through here just uh, to show you just how you affect different things in the amp 
uh, I'm going to be honest, uh, the scope for getting a good sound out of amp is pretty low. It sounds good for doing clean and very slightly distorted stuff. And other than that, it sounds p pretty ass. So you don't want to use it for like, you know, your next metal endeavor because it's not going to sound that good. So here's a clean sound. So uh, the ones that sound the most natural to me are the Class A and the Class AB. Um, those are just my favorite. You can you can mess around with all of them and you'll probably get a good uh, effect. Uh, again, EQ here makes a big difference. And the amount of drive. I'm kind of clipping a lot there. Let me turn that down. As you can hear, when it starts to break up, it doesn't really sound supernatural. Uh, and then the the cabinet makes a pretty big difference as well. So and the cabinet size. It's hard for me to show you exactly like how you would make a good sound with it. Um, the the primary things you want to worry about is the pre EQ. It tends to get really um, sort of muddy, so generally you're going to have to pull out a lot of this area to make it sound good. You don't want to drive it too hard, so you're looking at clean sounds really. And uh, generally, if you put a compressor uh, in the pre effects here, um, it's going to just sound more even, and uh, it seems to have less problems where it gets kind of muddy in the middle. Um, I wouldn't put the drive too much higher than this. It starts to really sound very digital. And um, again, the cabinet is going to depend on sort of what, uh, what guitar you're using and stuff like that. But there is a pretty significant difference between all of these. And then if it's, say, too bright, so you're using a telly, and it's got like really cheap, bright pickups, and you got like... Kind of sound like that, and you can pull down this color. So yeah, and if you want it to be kind of more attacky, maybe you're playing some funk, um, you uh, can turn up the sag and that's going to give it a bit more. So yeah, and uh, other than that, just put a reverb on it, you can make a little, uh, you can make a little shimmer reverb if you put a chorus and a pitch shifter in the tank effects. And, um, yeah, you're pretty much ready to rock the world. So, so you should do that anyway. Um, so yeah, that's been pretty much, um, tips about AMP. Um, I hope they've been good tips. I hope they've been beneficial. And, um, if you have any tips yourself about the AMP, then let me know. And if you want to request the next device that I will do the next video on, then request it in the comments. And if one of them seems particularly want it, then I'll do that one. And subscribe. Goodbye.